Georgia likes to do. They'll do it more through formation and movement than personnel. Davo Sweeney, the aforementioned coach, brand new contract. He's got six wins against SEC schools. That leads all coaches. On the other side, start lose 14th season in Athens. Mark Richt. Checking the weather. Let's put it this way. It didn't take Todd and I long to get the sport coats off. <laughs> it is hot and humid, as you would expect, in late August in the south. 93 degrees. Georgia won the toss and deferred. Mar Marshall Morgan will tee it up. T.J. Green and C.J. Davidson await the kick on the other end. Here we go. C.J. Davidson three yards deep. Davidson out across the 25 and out to the 30 yard line. Excuse me, that's T.J. Green and a nice return. So Cole Stout gets his chance out of Dublin, Ohio. You know, the interesting thing, one of the interesting things about Cole Stout taking over compared to when Taj Boyd took over in 2011. When Taj took over, that was Chad Morris's first year as the coordinator. So he was learning a new system. Cole Stout has been in Chad Morris's system for the last three years. He's very familiar with it, very comfortable with it, running the offense. A fly sweep. Georgia trying to stretch it out, and they will. Adam Humphreys he is going to lose about two. Let's take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players. Mike Williams, he's got to fill the void left by Sammy Watkins and Martavius Bryant. Jordan Jenkins, one of the top outside linebackers in the SEC. And on the back end, Georgia has issues with their secondary because of inexperience, but not Damian Swan. He's making his 29th start, but now Clemson with a flag down. He's got a man free down the sideline, and it is Mike Williams. I think the flag's going to be Damian Swan offsides. He blitzed from the short corner. And again, Cole Stout, his first start on the road, but he was very quick in recognizing that blitz off the short corner and kept his poise and made the play. You got the call right, Todd. Well, we said impact players, Swan on one side, Williams on the other. Here they are. Pretty good idea to try to blitz. Damian Swan a little over anxious, and Cole Stout saw it right away, had his eyes in the right place at the right time. All the way down to the 34-yard line. Stout in the gun, play action. Throws rolling to his left to the corner of the end zone, and it's caught, but is he out of bounds? Jermon Hopper almost had a touchdown. But you see the mentality of Clemson in their offense. It's attack. So what if this is our quarterback's first start? We are going to attack this Georgia defense. Last year, this defense had a lot of problems, particularly in the back end. Seven different combinations of defensive backs started games for Georgia. New coordinator. Clemson is going right after him. That was a heck of a throw rolling to his left. And now he's going to come back with a middle screen. Had the blockers out there, he sure but he did. didn't have his running back hold on to it. D.J. Howard couldn't hold it. There's the new defensive coordinator for Georgia, Jeremy Pruitt. Well, you talk about a fast-rising star. Wow. I mean, it was just a few years ago he was coaching high school. A few years at Alabama with Nick Saban. Last year, the coordinator of Florida State's national championship defense. Wanted to get back in the SEC and spent one year in Tallahassee, and now he's here in Athens, Georgia. Third down and long. First time Clemson's been in that situation. Stout, plenty of time. Now he's going to run with it, and he's going to get there and a lot more. And Stout with a slide down to the 16-yard line. First down, Clemson. Well, already you're seeing the poise of Cole Stout. He picked up the corner blitz earlier in this drive. This is a four-man rush. He sees a nice alley. They're running with all the receivers, and he makes a good decision on third down to run and pick it up. An 18-yard scramble. Just inside the 17. 
in the red zone. The Tigers already on the move. And on the run around right end, D.J. Howard gets it to the 10. Rameek Wilson got over there to knock him out of bounds. Well, if the name stop rings a bell. There's his daddy, Cliff, who played in the NFL for 12 years. Yeah. Or lives in Greenville number. now, which is close to Clemson. Backup center in right now. Guillermo, number 57, is in. Got to secure this snap in the red zone, first and foremost. Stout looked like he was going to get under center, but now he will backpedal into the shotgun. Second down and two. Howard now sets up with him in the backfield. Low snap, by the way. Stout, though, going to the corner of the end zone. And again, it's a little too wide over there for Hopper. Yeah. And you mentioned the low snap. That, that disrupted the timing. When you are throwing the ball in this part of the field, the field is shrunk, and everything has to happen on time. They had a good combination with the routes. They had an opening, but the low snap messed up the timing of the throw. And Tom Ritter, our referee, stops play here. Sideline warning. I'm reading lips. I can't hear the official, but sideline warning's been issued. So a third down and two. Earlier in this drive, they had third and ten, and Stout ran it for 18. Well, I would expect run here. It might be a called quarterback run, but I would expect run on this third and short in this part of the field for Clemson. Davidson in motion. They fake it to him. Stout straight ahead. Tough run. First and goal, Tigers. Two great runs on this drive. One a long one, and that one a power run by Cole Stout. They loaded up the formation to the left and faked the sweep that way, and then he got right in the back pocket of his right guard, Kalen Davis, and a good smart run. A 6'4", 215-pound quarterback. That's a good safe call inside the 10-yard line. Already a 66-yard drive. And first and goal, Clemson. Now they're opening possession. Handoff on a counter. Well played that time by John Atkins. Only a gain of a yard. One of the things I think is going to be critical in this game for both teams is the ability to rotate linemen, particularly defensive linemen. If you're asking them to rush the passer, that takes a lot more energy than it does to run block if you're an offensive lineman. Just as you say that, Georgia switches up some people and gets some fresh bodies in on their defensive front on second down a goal. The ball just outside the three. Howard, they fake the sweep. It's Stout again. This time, bounces his way down inside the two. Nice second effort run again. You know, one thing to keep in mind about this Clemson offense, they do have a lot of playmakers, but they lost a 1,000-yard rusher last year in Roderick McDowell, and then their leading rusher coming back, Zach Brooks, a six foot 200 pound junior, injured his foot in August, and he's out for the season. He's going to redshirt, so they're down a little bit in the pecking order in terms of their running backs. Cole Stout, two runs on third down already on this drive. Third and goal here. Touchdown, Clemson. D.J. Howard, no, wait a minute. I thought he was in. Stop short. It looked for sure like he was going to make it easily in the touchdown. He got hit from the inside and turned him sideways. Again, D.J. Howard, 195-pound back. He's not a thumper. Watch him get hit and then turn sideways. A good hit by Tim Kimbrough. One of the inside linebackers, number 42, kept him out of the end zone. Great call, Todd. Fourth and goal. And Clemson's going to take a timeout. You know, ordinarily, ordinarily you say you're on the road, you got a new quarterback, you want to draw first blood, get on the scoreboard first. I think when you're inside the one and you've had momentum on this whole drive, I think you go for it here. If you get stopped, so what? Your defense is the strength of your team. Make Georgia go 99 yards. But the problem is, again, they're down in running backs. Who do you go to as a power back in this situation? Is it your quarterback or is it someone else? Now, Wayne Gallman, we haven't seen him yet. Number nine, 
He's a young redshirt freshman out of Loganville, Georgia. He's probably their their strongest runner. But do you give it to inside. a freshman? I know. <laughs> but you know what? You're going to have to give it to him sooner or later. That's true. You're going to have to trust younger guys sooner or later. He's on the sideline with his helmet on top of his head as the offense comes back out. Kirk Fleming does come in, though, as an extra back, a fullback at 230 pounds. So far on this drive, the best running back the Tigers have had has been their quarterback. And he's under center. But he'll hand it off. And touchdown, D.J. Howard. So Clemson strikes first. All you have to do is get that ball across the plane. It just has to break the plane of the goal line. It was close. Leonard Floyd, an outstanding young linebacker for Georgia, was at the point of attack, made a nice timed hit. But all you have to do is get that football across the plane. Ammon Lakip will be in for the point after. He's got big shoes to fill. The shoes of Chandler. Castanzaro, who's now the kicker for the Cardinals in the NFL, was one of the all-time great kickers in Clemson history. So, capping a long drive, 70-yard march in 12 plays, and the extra point is good. Great opening drive by the Clemson Tigers. They mixed it up with the pass, some timely runs by their quarterback, and then a one-yard plunge. Puts him in. So Clemson to kick. Bradley Pinion will kick off. Todd Gurley waits in the Georgia end zone. And he won't return this one. So a guy that's been waiting his entire career to hear his name called as a starting quarterback from Marietta, Georgia, he told us. Hudson Mason gets his call. He had two starts last year after Aaron Murray got hurt, but one was on the road and one was a bowl yeah. game. And just like uh, Cole Stout showed, the, the key early on is to play within yourself and play within your offense. Uh, Clemson had great balance in that first drive. Seven passes or seven runs and five passes. George is going to want to establish that run and get Todd Gurley involved. Keith Marshall, who's healthy after a knee injury. This is an offense that has a wealth of talent at the running back position. They're a little banged up at wide receiver, but they've got healthy talent lined up at the running back position. Todd Gurley, the tailback in the eye, had his career high last year against Clemson in the opener. Mason throws out complete and short gain out to Chris Conley. As we take a look at our Chick-fil-A impact players. Chris Conley, the wide receiver for Georgia. They don't have a lot of speed on the outside, but he's one of the leaders of that group. Freddie Jarrett, Stephon Anthony on the defensive side, along with Dick Beasley, makes for an impressive defensive team on the Clemson side. Gurley's all wrapped up, a loss of a yard. Well, as Holly mentioned, the strength of this Clemson defense is their defensive line. They have 12 returning lettermen in that defensive front, and eight of those 12 guys played in every single game last year. So they've got game experience, They've got the kind of depth that you have to have to be a great defensive football team. Hudson Mason in the shotgun with three wideouts and a third and long. Third and nine for Georgia. Going to throw the screen out to Gurley, and Clemson's all over it. Another loss, this time of five. And Grady Jarrett, Georgia native who played lights out against Georgia last year, comes up with a big play here. Diagnosed the screen very quickly. They're very well aware of how good Georgia's screen game is. And Grady Jarrett was not fooled. He read it. He read the feel of the line and worked right down the line of scrimmage to stop it for a short game. And so Georgia went the wrong way on their opening march. Lack of march, I should say. Colin Barber to punt. Adam Humphreys waits way back there on the other end at about the 40-yard line. Clemson should stand to get very good field position after this exchange. High snap. Nice kick. Humphreys. Whoa, way back. Fields it at the 21 yard line and now retreating. Georgia trying to get him there. And wow. What coverage that was. Great kick. Perfect placement. Outstanding coverage. All three combined to take a sure situation where Clemson looked to have a short field 
to putting him back inside the 15 yard That's line. That's how you do it. Long punt, an 11 yard loss on the return. Super Bowl MVP with the Ravens. He and Jesse Tuggle, great friends. And Jesse Tuggle is Grady Jarrett's dad. And Grady basically grew up calling Ray Uncle Ray. So he's over there pumping up Grady Jarrett. And he pumped him up pretty well on that screen pass where he dropped Gurley for a loss and forced the punt. So Clemson's second offensive series from the 10 yard line. Straight ahead run this time. And a pretty good one by D.J. Howard. Picked up four. Marlo Herrera from the linebacking core for Georgia made the stop. You know, I think as much as anything for Jeremy Pruitt, the defensive coordinator at Georgia in this game, is to do whatever he can to, to breathe some confidence into his defensive group. They gave up a touchdown and a, and a nice drive to first possession, but there's a lot of football left to be played. And they'll keep it on the ground. And this time, Georgia... Stops him after a short gain, maybe a yard. You mentioned Pruitt, the defensive coordinator with Florida State with their national championship team last year. As you take a look, they led the country in three different categories and second and third in the others. And well, they had a couple guys get drafted off of that defense, too. They had a lot of talent. He did a great job. He inherited a good defense that Mark Stoops built. Stout over the middle, and it's knocked down at the line of scrimmage. That's a huge three and out for the Georgia defense. They needed that at that point in time. That's exactly the kind of stop that they needed defensively. Sterling Bailey got his hand in the air and knocked it down. One of the captains today for Georgia. Good job by Bailey, knowing he couldn't get any more pressure, but he never took his eyes off of the quarterback, Cole Stout. So he timed his jump and was able to get a hand on the football. Reggie Davis waits on the kick from Bradley Pinion. And he's got a backpedal, and he'll have a chance at this one. From the 33, Georgia was not a good punt return team last year. That's better than they did on a lot of them. Got it back, an 11 yard return. When we return, the dogs on offense for the second time. Thirty-eight to thirty-five. This is the sixty-fourth meeting between these two teams. Georgia leads the all-time series, and right now they're trailing by seven on their home field. Good field position, though. Now for the dogs with their second offensive set here at the forty-three-yard line. Sony Michelle, the freshman, on the end around, and he's got eleven and a first down. We knew we were going to see him yeah. early. And in some different spots. So, you know, they, they told us, Mike Bobo said, we got to get this guy the football. He's got great vision and balance, and he's got the skill set to move out and play wide receiver some. They get the ball in his hands. He makes a big, big play for him. Sony, along with Nick Chubb, two highly touted running backs, roommates, as they came to Georgia. And, of course, they're backing up two great ones in Gurley and Marshall. 71 offense, five yard penalty remains first down. That's John Theus, who was right tackle last year, left tackle now, and he's lining up against number three, and that could have given him the jitters over there a little bit. Well, you mentioned the good field position, and I think Georgia needs to capitalize on it. In a game like this, that hidden yardage, they gained 22 yards on that exchange of punts. They need to capitalize. Here's Isaiah McKenzie, and he is lightning fast. We expect maybe to see him as a return man today. He's a little guy, but he's another freshman, and he gets nine yards. He's got that burst that a lot of guys don't have. Mark Rick says maybe more quick than fast, but you saw it there to get it down to the 42-yard line. Second down and seven. They fake it to him here, and Mason got a man on the sideline. And it's complete. Michael Bennett, tight rope on the sideline. Great job by Bennett, feet on the sideline, but a beautiful throw by Mason. Watch him throw to the back shoulder away from the incoming defender. He throws it away from the defense. You just need one foot down. Beautiful throw and execution on the sideline. No huddle, quickly out. To the freshman, he picks it up. It was an incomplete pass. Uh, Isaiah McKenzie, again, all 5'8 and 165 pounds of him. 
Pretty good rhythm right now. Balance, running pass, different guys getting their hands on the ball. There's Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator for Clemson. And again, Georgia looks to the sideline to get the call and up to the ball at the 23. They give it off to Gurley. Gurley's got the corner. Gurley's got the end zone. Touchdown, Georgia. Taylor Maxey led the way, and once Gurley got the corner, he knew he had the end zone. Marshall Morgan in for the point after. Tie game in Athens. Only took five plays. Todd Gurley, the preseason All-American, got a block on the corner. 23 yards later, Clemson seven, Georgia seven, between the hedges. They're waiting on the other end. This one's high and taken at the three by Green, but he's tripped up as he crossed the 15. Nice play by Sony Mitchell, the freshman on special teams, has had a couple of big plays. Let's take a look how Georgia's finding success brought to you by Expedia, Todd. Well, they got two linebackers out of position. Stephon Anthony and B.J. Goodson, you're going to see both of these guys get out of position. Now, the action starting this way is going to take care of Anthony, and then the block by Maxey is going to take care of Goodson. Watch the action fool the inside linebacker, and then the beautiful block on the edge, and that's all Gurley needed to get the ball to the end zone. Tigers from their own 16. Stout going to have it quickly out into the hands. Davidson run out of bounds at the 20. C.J. Davidson, kind of an interesting story, went to Clemson as a track man and track scholarship. He's a long jumper and a triple jumper. Sometimes you see track guys become wide receivers. Yeah. You usually don't see them Not become running, running backs. backs. No. It says something about his toughness, I yep. think. He'll flush out of the backfield. Stout wants to come back the other way. He's got a wide open man, but he dropped it. Would have been a first down. Mike Williams. Didn't look that one all the way in. Yeah, that's a good read and a good throw by Stout, and that's a ball that Williams has to have. And all he did was take his eyes and start to look upfield before he secured the catch. He's trying to find where the defender is coming from, and he didn't take care of first things first, and now he puts his team in a third down situation. And if Georgia gets a stop here on third down and seven, this place is going to light up again. Stout, nice throw, and he didn't hold on to that one either. And a fired up Jeremy Pruitt makes his defense halfway to the hash mark. Well, Quincy Mauger that time, a backup safety, just times the hit. Mike Williams this time looks it in, but he doesn't tuck it in. And Mauger's able to knock the ball loose. So back-to-back -back plays for Mike Williams. And that's a guy that's got to get his confidence back on the sideline because those are two plays he needs to make. Can't throw him any better than no. that. Minion to punt. Reggie Davis should have good field position again. This one an end over end kick. It's going to take this one at the 44. Davis short return. Nice coverage by the Clemson Tiger punt team. 557 remaining first quarter. Georgia back on offense in a minute. And again, excellent field position for Georgia. Their own 47 yard line. They got Sony Mitchell in there again, number one, the freshman, along with Keith Marshall. So a different look in the backfield again. A lot of depth for the dogs at running back. Mason to Mitchell. Got it to midfield. Drags a couple guys with him. Shows some power and picks up five. 
It's hard for Clemson and Brent Venables to prepare in a first game for guys that were playing high school last year. You're not yeah. sure where George is going to use them, and right now they've been pretty creative in the way they've used Michelle. You know he's good because they recruited him, but you don't know how good until you see him in action at this level. Hudson Mason's completed five passes to five different guys so far here in the first quarter. Out to Michelle again, and he's going to be, I think, a yard short, maybe less than a yard. There you see it. The head linesman that close to the first down. Heavy package coming in now for Georgia. They got a couple tight ends in the game, and then the Taylor Maxey, who got the big block on Gurley's touchdown in the last possession. Mike Bobo, longtime offensive coordinator and quarterback coach, and a quarterback here. And his playing days for the dogs. And I'll tell you what, I think he does as good a job coaching quarterbacks and preparing quarterbacks to play in this offense as anybody in the country. I really do. Third down of the yard, the toss to Marshall. And Keith Marshall's first carry of the year nets him three yards and a first down. You know, last year, think about this. This offense last year set a school record in yards per game at 484 yards and they had all kind of injuries to their skill guys they Marshall and Gurley missed 11 games combined their their best speed receiver Malcolm Mitchell was hurt in the first game and they battled through all that and still set a school record for yards per game Keith Marshall hurt his knee against Tennessee early in the season last year so back healthy here and blocking for Mason who's going deep man out there and broken up and a flag Chris Conley, the intended receiver, but we're going to have pass interference. Uh, Jadar Johnson. Well, the reason that they got the interference call is because the ball was a little bit underthrown by Hudson Mason. I don't believe that he did that on purpose, but because the ball was a little bit underthrown, the receiver had to stop and wait, and the defender couldn't slow down before he made contact. Pass interference for 18. Defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. DJ Dar Johnson is running like crazy from the backside of the formation to get there to make a play. But because the ball's underthrown, the receiver stops and slows down, and Johnson doesn't know where the ball is and continues to run in to the intended receiver. So first down, Georgia by penalty at the 26-yard line. Play fake. Mason's going right back to the corner, and this one broken up. Reggie Davis, the intended receiver, and another flag. This one might be on Jenkins. I thought it hit Jenkins in the back of the helmet. I'm yeah. not sure where that ball landed. And I thought he was in good position. The question is, did he have his hands on the receiver as they were running down the field? It's okay until the ball's in the air, but once the ball's thrown, you can't do it. Pass interference, number 14 defense, 15 yard penalty for the previous spot, automatic first down. Yep, there it is, the hands. And again, two plays in a row, the defenders not knowing where the football is. And so they're instinctively making contact and grabbing. And again, the ball was underthrown, but the defenders were too aggressive with their hands. 30 yards in the last two plays for Georgia, and they've got it just outside. The Tiger 11 yard line first and 10 they can get a first down inside the one Mason over the middle that one incomplete Stefan Anthony was covering intended for Michael Bennett actually a little surprised that they threw on that down I mean they've had success they drew some penalties now they're in the red zone they've got Marshall in there instead of Gurley. Four wide receivers set here for Hudson Mason. Looks right, comes back to the left on a wide receiver screen, and Bennett lost the ball, scrambling for it. Was he down? He was. So it's going to bring up third down. Ooh, that was close. Actually, I think he got back on top of it anyway. Ball was starting to come out. Yeah. Big situation right here for the Clemson defense. They need to get a stop here. This might be a time for Vic Beasley to turn it up. Make a play right here on the edge. Go 
ruling on the field was that the runner was down. That play is under further review. So the last play under review. You know, one of the things about playing against a guy like Vic Beasley, as we take another look at the end of this play, the ruling was that he was down before the ball came out. I think his elbow's down right there, and the ball's just starting to come out, don't you? Yeah. Watch the left elbow, uh, Michael Bennett. Or forearm elbow. Ooh. That's real close. But then who had the ball when it was all said and done? Yeah, it was kind of, they just kind of stopped right there. His hand is still around the football right there. You see the red and black glove is still wrapped around the stripe of the football, and then it comes out right now. Doesn't get any tighter than that one to call. Rocky D. Good is our replay official up here in the booth. Dave Kataya is back in our studios. Dave, you had a look at that one. What do you think? Brad, I did it. I did have a look at it, Brad, and it looks like that elbow is down before the ball comes out. Now, is there enough to confirm that? Probably not. I think this call is going to stand, and it should stand, in my opinion. All right, Dave, thanks. And we have fate. We'll await the official ruling here in Athens. Georgia had 30 yards of gifts given yeah. to them and then they went to the pass play on first down and then that pass to Bennett. If it stands it's going to be third down and about eight. Davo Sweeney rallying his defensive troops with Brent Venables over there on the sideline. I think in anticipation of going out for a third down play here. So the conference still going on and Rocky D. Good and Tom Ritter having their chat. Michael Bennett's waiting pretty anxiously as well. Yeah. <laughs> and one of the interesting things about a play like this because it was called down. And it is reviewable obviously because they're reviewing it but I never saw who came out of there with the football and because the referees called it down they didn't change any kind of possession signal. After further review ball was out and lost possession prior to the runner being down there was a clear recovery by Clemson. First down. Wow. wow. That is a huge, huge play. And one of the biggest replays of the opening college football weekend. Still not sure who recovered it. Yeah. Well, a big break for Clemson. They were either faced with a critical third down situation. And this is even better. They get the turnover on second down and get the ball back to their offense. The Clemson will take over just inside the 10 yard line. Clemson trying to get something on the ground here. I'm going to go back to Dave Kataya back in the studio. Dave, if you're still with us, what do you think of the call? Brad, as a. Brad, as I said before, uh, there's not enough evidence there to overturn that call, in my opinion. You can't tell when the ball comes out versus the elbow hitting the ground. I'm with you. Yeah. But Clemson fans are happy. Second down and seven. Georgia looks mixed up defensively. They have two receivers out to the left. Only one defender right now. Here they come running out. Stout. Deep ball. Got a man broken up at the last moment back there in the secondary by Reggie Carter. Yeah, that was Sharon a great Peak play. Had a step back there. That was a great play by Carter. Again, they looked a little bit out of position on alignment. They ran out late and credit Carter for not giving up on the play. Another well thrown ball could have been a catch, but Carter rips his arm in there and fights the ball out. Now it's third down and seven. Georgia would love to hold and get the ball back after that controversial fumble. Here comes a blitz. 
Stout going to go down inside the five. I think Damian Swan is the guy that caused the commotion on the blitz. Boy, really well designed blitz, timed blitz. Remember, Damian Swan jumped off sides early on a blitz. This time he times it perfect. This disrupts the pocket. And then they're able to collapse. It was kind of a zone blitz. So Lorenzo Carter showed blitz and he dropped into coverage. And Damian Swan, the timing is what made the play for Georgia. Bradley Pinion doesn't have a lot of room right here to field this snap and try to get the punt away. But Georgia's got the return on. And it'll be Reggie Davis from the 46. And he's got it back to the 36. Now coming up tonight, 8 o'clock on ABC. Heisman Trophy winner Jameis Winston and top-ranked Florida State Seminoles begin their title defense. They'll take on the Cowboys of Oklahoma State in the Cowboy Classic. Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo tonight, 8 Eastern on ABC. You know, that last possession, it, it, they moved the ball. They got 30 yards worth of gifts when they were throwing it and got the interference, and then they turned it over on a pass and completion. I think they got to go back to feed number three here. Great field position. Give it to your big guy here and let him try to run the football. Here's a toss to Gurley with a fullback in front again. And Gurley down the sideline punishing people as he goes. I'd give and it to a him shove again. at the end. Give it to him again. You know, he wasn't even in the last possession. Marshall was in most of that possession. They threw almost every down. He's fresh. He's in better shape this year than he was a year ago. Make them tackle him because that gets old in a hurry. This time they fake it to him. Mason, a lot of pressure, and he's just got to toss it out there. Closest guy was Quaybon Hicks. That'll bring up second down at 10 in the final minute 23 of the first quarter. I mentioned career high for Todd last year on 12 rushes, including a 75-yard touchdown. He kind of tweaked his quad on that run. He's looked very fresh today. Gurley, and again, it takes three Tigers to knock him out around the 16-yard line. He is 226 pounds of muscle. Nice job blocking by John Theus, the left tackle, turned back inside. Wide receiver Michael Bennett got a block for him. They're trying to pin those defenders inside and let him get the ball to the edge. He's done well against non SEC teams. He's done well against SEC teams. Third down and two. Mason, quick throw, got it to Bennett in the slot. And Bennett's got it first and goal just outside the one. He Perfect. held on to that one. Perfect timing by Hudson Mason. Sit down right in between the defenders. Watch Bennett sit down, give a good target. Perfectly timed throw. Georgia goes with a hurry up. Mason trying to sneak it in. And now a touchdown signal. Good job by the Georgia offense yeah. to go in a hurry. And Hudson Mason from a yard out. Well, a little page out of the Clemson playbook. Get a first down, line up and go fast. They caught the Clemson defense not ready to play. And Hudson Mason, very simple play. The safest play you can run a quarterback sneak. There's no exchanges other than the center quarterback. And he got a good push into the end zone. A good push from Todd Gurley. Marshall Morgan for the point after. Up and good, and Georgia's got their first lead of the 2014 season. And their quarterback that waited a long time to get his turn to be the starter between the hedges, a one-yard scoring plunge. The credit that Georgia defense, again, Jeremy Pruitt, first-year defensive coordinator, a, an entire new defensive staff for the first time since 1964, all new defensive coaches. You got a team that defensively last year had the worst numbers maybe in Georgia history yeah. in defense. And after the turnover, after their offense turned it over, they get a stop, they get another decent punt return, and the offense capitalizes on the, the short field.
Clemson's had three three and outs back to back to back. They can't afford that right now because this crowd in Athens is fired up and smelling blood. And we've still got three quarters and 35 seconds to go. Now last year, this game featured over a thousand yards of offense, 38 35, back and forth game, lots of big plays. I don't anticipate that it's going to be that same kind of a high scoring shootout. I think the defenses of both teams are a little bit stronger. But right now, Georgia taking advantage of field position to get this lead. Marshall Morgan, and this is a short pooch kick here. Taken at the 21 yard line and slipping down right there. One of the up men in the kickoff return. That was Martin Aiken, backup linebacker. Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week continues tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern. When we're done, number 14, Wisconsin, and number 13, LSU get together. In the Advocare, Texas kickoff. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels tonight, 9 Eastern on ESPN and live on Watch ESPN. You get your first look at Leonard Fournette. A lot of people saying a lot of big things about this guy and comparing him to guys like Adrian Peterson, and he's just a freshman. And we're getting our first look at Deshaun Watson also, the young freshman quarterback that they believe is the future. We knew he'd play some tonight. Georgia native, his first snap, and he'll run with it. And he runs well with it near the 30-yard line. Deshaun put up ridiculous numbers in high school. Over 13,000 passing yards, 4,000 plus on the ground, and just had a sensational high school career. One of the top dual threat quarterbacks in the country coming out in this his freshman season. C.J. Davidson, he's got a first down. And Good, just, tough run. if you're watching, just so you know, this is not a reflection on Cole Stout. Uh, the coaches said knew they were going to play Watson. Watson knew he was going to get to play. I think it's just a little change of pace because he's a little bit more of a dual threat guy. Clemson took the early lead. The dogs back to back touchdowns at the end of one lead 14 seven. Or maybe even early in this drive get his confidence back get him back involved because he's going to have to be a playmaker for you. Deshaun Watson going to go deep airs it out. And knocked down on a ball intended for Jermon Hopper. Watson showed his arm there. Might have been a little bit short. Because Watson had to sidestep a little pressure, he was late making this throw. I mean, you got to throw this ball up before the safety can become a factor. See, now it's double coverage, and you could have made a, a point that there was contact or a grab of the jersey, but because the throw was late, it enabled two guys to converge on the ball instead of just throwing against one-on-one. -on -one. Watson in yeah, the shotgun on second down at 10. Nice hole up the middle. Good blocking for C.J. Davidson again. And he got six yards. He'll bring up third down. Clemson working in some new offensive linemen, new starters this year. And then one of the guys they did have coming back as a starter, David Beasley, is suspended for one game. They have three players that are missing this game because of suspensions. He's Beasley was a two year starter at guard. Howard will empty the backfield. Watson going to go deep again. He's got a man. Perfect throw to Mike Williams. Todd just mentioned it and that one was right on the money. See, he's too big of a factor for your offense to get down on him. So you go right back to him. You give him another opportunity. Great release off the line of scrimmage to get separation from Damian Swan. And then Watson with the perfect throw over the outside shoulder. That was pretty. Inside the 31 for Clemson first down. 29 yard pass play. Watson wants to go back to the air. Boy, he's fired it, isn't he? Wow. Touchdown. Sharon Peak. What a throw. 30 yard laser shot. Touchdown, Clemson. Where well, Meek Wilson, the linebacker, is running in pretty good position. Watch number 51 turn and run, but he has no idea the ball's coming. He never turns to look for the ball, he never makes a play to the ball, and the ball goes right by his ear. 
into Sharon Peaks waiting arms. That's a confident throw by a young quarterback. You're not kidding. Lake Hips extra point right down the middle. You want to impress your veteran teammates? The freshman out of Gainesville, Georgia. Only about an hour from here. Two rocket throws, the second one to Sharon Peak, right on the money. 14-14 in Athens. A 30-yard strike has tied the game as we take a look. Take you inside the drive. Direct TV's inside the drive, Todd. Well, two things to watch. Number one, watch DJ Howard pick up the blitz on the end of the line. And then watch Marie Rameek Wilson. He's going to run with the inside receiver and be in good position. But because he never looks back at the ball, a quarterback is told and taught, you throw that right past his ear. If he never looks, he has no idea where the ball is, throw it right past his ear, and you can't do it any better than Deshaun Watson did right there. Perfect. Pinion set to kick away, and again, Georgia's got Todd Gurley, their All-American tailback, waiting as a kick return man. He's got a 100-yard kickoff return to his credit. In his freshman season, he's going to bring that. Nope, he's not. He, he wanted about to. <laughs> he wanted to. So Hudson Mason takes the field again. He's had an interesting relationship with another former Bulldog quarterback, and Holly's got more on that. Well, perhaps no one in the world can understand what Hudson Mason's going through, except for DJ Shockley. You waited your turn behind David Green. You were able to start for one season, and you won an SEC championship. So what is it that you're trying to share with Hudson about how to handle this moment? Well, the biggest thing is he has to go out and just play his type of game. He can't go out and say, hey, I'm going to try to do like DJ or try to be like anybody who has a one-year starter. He has to go out and play his game. He's smart enough. He's knowledgeable. And uh, I think Hudson's going to be doing just fine. What are some of the things you've been telling him to shut out the exterior noise and just worry on what he's supposed to do? Well, I think the biggest thing is, like I mentioned, he got to go play his game. He got to understand Hudson's going to be Hudson, and he has intangibles. He's been around this system for five years now, so he understands what Coach Bobo and Coach Rick wants him to do. If he goes out and does that, and he has a lot of tools around him. He has a lot of players, so play within himself. Don't overthink it. Don't try to let all the outside sources get in your brain, and you'll be just fine. What do you think he's done so far? I think he's done an absolute. He's done a great job. He's just distributing the ball to all his players, uh, get them all involved, and you can see the command he has of the offense, and he, he's a good distributor. He does a good job with that, and he has complete control of this offense. I know you can hear our guys in the booth. Let's see if Brad or Todd have a question for you. Hey, Shock, I just wanted to say to you, I know there was times that you thought about transferring, and I'm sure that ran through Hudson's mind at one point or another, too. Oh, absolutely it did. It was a huge thing. We actually talked throughout the summer, and there was a time when I told him, hey, if you think about it, I'm not going to tell you one way or another to leave or to go, but you got to make the best decision for you because at the end of the day, you got to wake up in the morning and look in the mirror and say, this is the best decision for me. And, you know, I I had the same situation, but we talked for a long time, and there was a lot of confusion. He wanted to go back and forth, but ultimately he made a great decision, I believe. Georgia and on a third down and short, and I don't know if they got there. I think it's going to bring up fourth down. Well, thank, thank you so much, DJ. We appreciate you being here. And, you know, keep in mind, DJ did win a championship in his one and only starting season, so good things happen when you stick around. He Absolutely. Did. Thanks, guys. He did in 2005 after taking over for Greeny and one of the all-time Georgia passing leaders and still in the hearts of Georgia fans for sticking around and winning that SEC championship back in 2005. DJ now in our business, a rising star in the broadcasting industry. Well, George is going to punt here. The only question I have on that is, is the guy they gave the football to that time was Sony Michelle. Yep. And he's the freshman back, and he's not one of your proven guys on a third and short. A little surprising. This punt is going to take... A Clemson bounce out around the 32 yard line short kick that time so Clemson's got it back and kids is a current hit so Kenny thanks for uh, letting us come and join you a little bit last night it's always nice to be able to walk in the back door too and yeah, it not, is not the front door <laughs> it's kind on of the bus nice and in the back door quick throw by stout out in space our Davis Scott, another true freshman. He's got a good gain, and Clemson's going to go here. Hurry up. They'll spot it down and snap it immediately. From the 38-yard line. Straight ahead, Georgia smells this one. And a nice play defensively by Josh Dawson off the defensive line. 
See, the key thing if you want to go fast is you have to make first downs. If you go fast and you go three and outs, then that, you know, that kind of defeats the purpose. You go fast, you got to make some first downs. Right now, a critical third down situation for Cole Stout. And this one's big for the Georgia defense for the opposite reason. Trying to get a stop on third and five. The heat coming. Stout fires. And it is caught. What a catch by our David Scott. Well, we've seen about three times now where Georgia defenders are in position, but they're not finding the ball. And the receiver knows exactly where the ball is as he's tracking it. Aaron Davis is running to get in position, but he has no idea where the football is, and he's not able to get his hands up to try to fight the ball out in time. Clemson's got something working here, trying to regain the lead at the 28-yard line. Stout pumps one way and coming deep to the left side. There's a penalty. And a flag at the one. This one will be on Devin Bowman. Well, I mentioned last year this Georgia secondary had all kind of problems. And there's clear early contact before the ball is even there this time. They've had seven different. 37 defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Seven different starting combinations in the defensive backfield. They had two or three guys that decided they didn't want to stay here at Georgia and moved on to other places. So they've got a lot of young new faces and a new coordinator. And right now, uh, Clemson is going after them. Tigers have got the dogs on their defensive heels right now at the 13-yard line. They fake the fly sweep, and now Stout in space. He'll keep it. Stout with a slide at about the six. Really good decision. Really good decision by Cole Stout. You're in scoring territory. You're in definite field goal range. If you don't like what you see, just get positive yardage closer to the goal line. Again, his dad, big smile on his face over there. I think that's his brother Zach too that's standing next to his dad Zach played at Ole Miss. Last time they were in this formation it was a quarterback power run. Here it is again. And he's going to have the first down I think or is it just a little bit short. That's going to be shy. Marlo Herrera. Made the stop. I think they're going to measure this. No, well, maybe not. I thought yeah, the officials no, called for a measurement. Yeah, they're bringing the chains out. Let's check in with Holly while they're getting set to measure. Well, you were talking about Cole Stout's dad, Cliff Stout, sitting in the stands. He was a backup quarterback himself. He knows what that feels like. I talked to him before the game, and I said, were you able to sleep last night, or how nervous were you? And he said, I take my cues from my son. He's calm, cool, and collected. So he doesn't get nervous. That helps me not get nervous. So far, he's looked pretty calm today. <laughs> I don't know if I believe that. As you said earlier, the <laughs> parents, the parents of these quarterbacks are more nervous than the guys are, right? Yeah. I think he probably slept like a baby, woke up every three hours crying. <laughs> so it's third down and less than one. Georgia fans trying to make it difficult for the Tiger offense at the three yard line. Same formation. They bring that running back in motion, fake the sweep and run quarterback power. And they do again and we got to wait on this one. This I time, think he's still short. Yeah, this time he tried to run to the opposite side of the formation. They showed the same look, but instead of running back to the left on the quarterback power, he tried to follow the right side to get the first down. Now you got a decision. Fourth down at length of the football. In a tie game. As you said earlier on that opening drive by Clemson when they got it on fourth down but they were at about the one foot line after a yeah. 70 yard yeah. march. This one's a little different story. They would still make Georgia go 97 yards if they don't pick up that two feet right there or not even two feet. 
I don't know. I would be inclined to. I would be inclined to kick here and get three points and, and take the lead on the road. I, I think Clemson's going to go for it. Dabo just looked at his tight end and his quarterback and said, "Let's go get it." Fourth and less than one. You'll know by the reaction here in a moment whether the Tigers get it or not. This time he got it. Yep. So somewhat of a gutsy call. The ball came out at the end of the play. And it's going to be first and goal, Clemson. You know, fourth down and less than one. I never love it when you when you snap the ball six yards off the line of scrimmage to start the play. <laughs> yeah. But Cole Stout did a nice job of powering that ball forward for the first down. He did see the ball come out after he landed on his back. Right at the two yard line. First and goal Tigers. Whoa. Davidson picks it up. Trying to head to the corner. Georgia will meet him before he can get there. Loss of a yard. So you know what happened here? Cole Stout was under center, and I think the center thought it was a shotgun snap, and that thing squirted out to the side. The center, Ryan Norton, he snaps it like it's a shotgun, I think. This time they went under center, and it's a bad exchange. Watch, that ball didn't even come close to hitting Cole Stout's hands, and Clemson is very, very fortunate that they still have the football. And they do have it, second down and goal. Straight ahead run this time. Down inside the one is Davidson. So it's going to be third down and goal from about the one foot line. Tenth play of the Clemson drive. And again, third down inside of one. And your quarterback's in the shotgun, but this is your offense. The last time they were under center, they didn't get a good exchange. Davidson airborne and in touchdown, Clemson. He's the high jumper, right? Or long jumper? Both. <laughs> he jumped right over the goal line on that one. He didn't have to do a triple jump. It was an airborne long jump from a yard out. Both of their quarterbacks led back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives. I mean, that's great for the confidence of their entire offense and particularly their two new quarterbacks. C.J. Davidson, only his fifth career touchdown, but he's got Clemson back out in front. We had a great time. Went to Oxford on Sunday, Clemson on Monday, Athens on Tuesday. So Clemson's regained the lead now. 68 yard march in 10 plays capped off by a one yard touchdown and Todd Gurley they keep him out there as a kick return man they probably should have had him out there offensively on the last series Georgia getting kind of cute with their offense I'd give it to number three a few times if I was them Gurley five yards deep and Todd will bring this one out and there he goes one block and it might be over Todd Gurley coast to coast can he make it Yes, he can. Touchdown. The great equalizer, Todd Gurley. The second career 100 yard kick return for a score. Well, Georgia last year was the worst in the SEC in both kickoff returns and punt returns. We have already seen, even before that play, big improvement in their return game tonight. And he is a dynamic playmaker. He wasn't able to return the first two kicks. This time he gets it. Same guys, the fullback, Maxie, with a block on the kicker. Jeb Blazevich, a freshman tight end with a big block. And all Todd Gurley needed was a crease. 
They never did get him down. At the end of 100 yards, he's still standing. Had a big, long touchdown run in the game last year down in Death Valley. This one even longer off a kickoff return, but he is one of the premier players in all of college football. And the more times you can feed him the football, the better I think your chances are of winning, as long as he's fresh and strong and can handle it. Let's check in with Holly. Fresh, strong, and healthy. Todd Gurley last year and an ankle. Didn't play in every game, missed parts of three and a half games. He said his only goal going into this season was to play every single game. He slimmed down a little bit. He said he's been working on his abs, and I think those extra pounds helped him finish that run. He made it, even though he was chugging at the end zone. I don't know what Homer Simpson would say about that, <laughs> but he's a Homer Simpson guy. He's watched that all week long. He's got five Simpson watches, including the one he was wearing that his sister gave him in our meeting yesterday. But he has lit the crowd at Sanford Stadium. Marshall Morgan, deep kick, non-returnable. 21-21 here. Let's see what else is going on around college football with Reese Davis. Reese. Here, a matchup of ACC and SEC deadlocked at 21. Cole Stout, who led the last touchdown drive, brings them back out as they start at the 25 yard line. Leonard Floyd has been kind of quiet for Georgia tonight. He's got to make a play for this Bulldog defense. Straight ahead run. DJ Howard only got a couple. Reggie Carter made the stop as we approach the seven minute mark of the second quarter. Been impressed with Clemson's offense and new offensive line, new quarterback, but they have played very aggressively here in the first half and have executed, I think, pretty doggone well. Stout pumps, throws late and incomplete. Might have been hit as he threw. Georgia got some pressure on him. Mike Thornton, number 96, a senior nose tackle out of Stone Mountain. Got some heat on him on the inside. Third down and eight. The crowd is riled again. Kind of an awkward look for Cole Stout right now. Only two down linemen, four guys standing up. They draw the audible. Now they back out of it. Got to hurry. Too late. Unless they got a timeout called. They did. That was created by the confusing look that the Georgia front was giving Cole Stout. A big third down for Clemson when we return. Complete out to Humphreys. He's not going to get anywhere. Got a flag down. Well, thrown in the area where it could either be roughing the passer or holding. Roughing yep. the passer, number seven defense. 15 yards, first down. Lorenzo Carter, the highly touted first year player out of Norcross, Georgia. And this one hurts. Put yeah. his helmet right in Cole Stout's face. And Cole says, I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take the shot and I'll take the flag. Very unnecessary. You see Tracy Rocker, the new defensive line coach, getting after him a little bit because it was well defended. They forced the quick throw. They were out there to stop it short of the first down, and you give them a free 
set of downs just because of a mental mistake by a young player. First down at the 43. And now on the sweep, Howard all bottled up again. Floyd got a piece, Kimbrough got a piece. And so did Reggie Carter. Again, Clemson just stays at the line. They're at the line with no huddle, but they've not done a lot of tempo. They've not played as fast as they normally would play, or they like to play when they had Taj Boyd as the quarterback. Hopper was in motion, now sets up on the slot to the right. Stout going that way, and it's intercepted by Aaron Davis. A red shirt freshman walk on who Jeremy Pruitt said he's got size he can run and he makes the first big play of his career. Well and Aaron Davis played corner all spring. He started at safety tonight so he's got very good coverage skills and ball skills as a former cornerback that time he just read Cole Stout the ball was thrown late by Cole Stout and Aaron Davis made him pay for it. Now can Georgia regain the lead from their own 48 yard line. Keith Marshall is the tailback in the eye. They're just going to toss it to him. And he's going to be dropped for a loss. Great play Big defensively play. by DJ Reader. Big play because not only is it, is it a critical time in the game, but you get a negative yardage play. You put the Georgia offense behind the chains and a little bit off schedule. Second down and 13 now because of excellent defensive play in a sudden change situation that that's a great sign of the maturity of your defense after a turnover they come right out and get a negative play on first down. Keeping on the ground of Marshall and only about a yard so Georgia gets the interception but now they face a third down and about 12 coming up. And I would say the same thing for Hudson Mason right now on this third down play. Don't force anything. Don't make a mistake here that would give Clemson momentum, that would give them the ball with good field position as we go under five minutes here in the first half. Take a look. If it's there, take it. If not, there's nothing wrong with playing field position, punting the football, and letting your defense come back on and defend a big field. Third down and 12. Four and a half minutes remaining in the half. Mason. Short throw and Marshall dropped it. Thinking about where he yep. was going to run with it and didn't take the football along. So a wasted turnover there by Georgia. And that'll mean a punting situation for Colin Barber. He blasted one earlier in the game, second longest punt of his career, a 60 yarder. He just liked to hang this one up and not let Adam Humphreys bring it back the other way. Trying to kick it away to the sideline. Humphreys still makes the catch, and he's run out of bounds immediately. After a 38 yard kick. Now coming up tomorrow night, the Heat's on in Atlanta. 43 drivers battle to secure a spot in the chase. Only 16 drivers advance and only two races to go. The Oral B USA 500 in Atlanta tomorrow night at 7 Eastern on ESPN and live on Watch ESPN. That's actually over in Hampton, Georgia, which is about, oh, I don't know, 70 miles from where we are right now. Busy weekend in Atlanta and in and around Atlanta. Athens here with 92,000. Dragon Con. Todd wanted to go over to Atlanta, take that in. Kenny <laughs> Chesney's concert last night and a race tomorrow. That's a lot of stuff. This guy's look good. Davidson. He got belted at the end of that run by Corey Moore. But he picked up six. I was at a hotel one time, I think in State College, Pennsylvania, when there was a Dragon Con thing going on. <laughs> Very interesting. Our statistician Pat McGrath was going to go as himself just to scare people. <laughs> Second down and four. Straight ahead Davidson nice cutback and he's going to get the first down. 
John Atkins made the tackle and we're down to three and a half minutes. Boy any points here by either team before halftime would give them a lift heading to the locker room that's for sure in what has been a, a seesaw battle and a really fun football game to watch here to open up the season. Last year it was 38 35 over in Death Valley Clemson Clemson coming out on top. They're going to measure this and while they do let's check in with Holly. Clemson's offense faced some adversity before the ball was even kicked off. The coaches told us that Sam Cooper number 86 was going to start this game. He's a fifth year senior tight end who they call their most physical blocker. But in pregame warmups guys he injured his left lower leg or foot. He limped off to the locker room before the game even started when the team ran back out for the game. He was in a walking boot. He has not played at all tonight will not play tonight. So we've seen three other tight ends. Jordan Leggett's done most of the work but Stanton Seckinger and J.J. McCullough have all gotten in. That's really tough when you get hurt in the warm-ups. It is a first down for the Tigers just outside their own 28 yard line. Again keeping it on the ground doing a nice job of blocking for C.J. Davidson and he's doing some power running picks up six more. Davidson carries. Went right behind his left guard Reed Webster that time. And again Clemson does go with some tempo here quick snap same run and the same result are very close to it. I think right now you'll see Clemson if they get another first down here they might look to open it up again. They want to be smart. They want to be a little bit conservative. Cole Stout threw an interception on his last possession and you're right where you want to be in this football game at 21 21 in the first half on the road. DJ Howard this time both hands around the ball and just blasts his way inside. I should say outside the 40. Good enough for a first down. See, that's the second first down in this possession. Now you're out close to midfield. Now I wouldn't be surprised to see a little play action and take a shot down the field in the passing game. Clemson has only one timeout remaining in this half, keep in mind, with two and a half to go in the quarter. And again, Howard off the right side picks up three more. Again Georgia's first year defensive coordinator Jeremy Pruitt eight days after winning a national championship for Florida State he decided he was coming to Athens to help Mark Richt and his defense after six straight runs it's a wide receiver screen to Humphreys and he's knocked out of bounds around the forty nine. Very conservative so far when they when they are calling place here in this possession just moved under two minutes in the first half. Again if you're Chad Morris if you're Dabo Sweeney you don't want to make a big mistake here. You don't want to do something to turn the momentum of the game. You're right where you want your team to be tied up in the first half with a new quarterback on the road against a ranked opponent. Third and one. Stout going to throw it out to Goldman in the flat and he's got the first down and blockers in front. Whipped it out to Goldman who hasn't seen a lot of action redshirt freshman also a Georgia native out of Loganville. Wilson made the tackle but the Tigers are back in Bulldog territory. Clemson with one timeout remaining in the first half. Three receivers to the right for Stout. He's coming right back to the left though and that's to Williams down the sideline one man to beat. And he's got it first and goal Clemson. Well that was really poor leverage by the cornerback on that side of the field. I mean again this is another safe conservative throw and you hope he makes one guy miss. That's just poor leverage poor technique by Rico Johnson a freshman cornerback with bad leverage and a bad angle and a very short completion is turned into a big play. Lucky for Georgia he stepped out of bounds at yeah. the 22 yard line but still first down for Clemson there would have been down to the five had he not stepped out back to the ground and straight up the middle for Goldman as we're down to a minute and a half remaining in the half. Williams one of our impact players and has made an impact on this drive as Clemson's trying to regain the lead here before halftime. Eleventh play for the Tigers here at the 17 yard line of Georgia. See they're not in any sense of hurry up urgency right now. They're they're wanting to use the clock and I think Dabo would be very happy with a field goal here and a 24 21 lead. Look for a touchdown but don't go crazy here. 
Might look for the touchdown right here. And overshot everybody. I think Stout knew that, that double coverage back there. He was just going to get rid of it and save some time. Clock stop with 55 to go. This okay. drive, Cliff's, uh, heck, I, I knew I was going to say Cliff at some point. Coles, <laughs> three out of four. Watson has a touchdown as well. The freshman, when he came in with a couple of beautiful throws. I wouldn't even be surprised to see a run here on this third down play. DJ Howard is in the backfield with Stout. Crowd again trying to make it difficult for the Tiger offense. Stout rolls, got a lot of pressure early and incomplete. So that time the dogs brought some heat. Stout felt the heat, and the ball's incomplete. Yeah, Herrera. The inside linebacker comes untouched. Nobody gets a piece of him. Direct line to the quarterback and forces the early throw by Cole Stout. We mentioned Ammon Lakip taking over for Chandler Catanzaro, who is one of the great kickers in Clemson history. And now he's got his shot here to try to put his team back out in front. A 34 yard field goal attempt. And Georgia is going to take a timeout to let the kicker think about it a little bit. 52 seconds remaining in the half. We'll be right back. I'm out. Georgia, well known as a high school football state, produce a lot of great players. Clemson, only 20 miles from the Georgia state line. They both of these teams recruit this state very heavily. Lake it from 34. And it's way to the left. Still at 21. And the halftime is coming close. Reese Davis, let's check in with you. We'll see you guys in less than a minute. Georgia takes the football back after the missed field goal at the 20 yard line. Hudson Mason joined in the backfield by Todd Gurley. And he's going to throw it across the middle to Bennett. I thought he was going to go to Gurley for a moment there. Pick up of about four. Well, Georgia used the timeout, but I, I just can't imagine that they're going to get real fancy here. The, the same thing is true for Mark Rick in Georgia right now. It's 21 21. Our defense has made a couple stops. Our new quarterback has played pretty well. Let's not do anything to turn the momentum drastically here at the end of the first half. We get to receive the ball to start the second half. We won the toss and deferred in the first half. Forty four seconds through heading and a second down and six. Georgia two of their biggest play receivers their speediest yeah. guys aren't in the game due to injuries and one due to suspension. So without Scott Wesley and Malcolm Mitchell they don't have huge big play threats. Right. Bennett and Conley those guys a little bit more possession receiver types second and six and the throw completes and it's a first down to Jay Rome the tight end that's first catch by a tight end and now that they got the first down Hudson Mason says let's go get something here or at least maybe take a shot. Pressure this time he has to throw that one away. And that was Vic Beasley. We've been waiting for him to get some heat. Brent Venables is saying, how about an intentional grounding call? And there is a flag in the Georgia backfield. Well, he never left the pocket. The ball crossed the line of scrimmage, but he never left the pocket. And there, I don't know that there was a receiver in the area. 
I think Brent Venables was the closest receiver. Yeah. <laughs> and he's wearing purple, right. not red. Here's a call from Tom Ritter. He's looking at Hudson Mason's jersey number, I think. Well, I just think you run the football and you go into the That's locker room. For 14. Carries a 10 second runoff. Please set the clock to 21 seconds. 21. The only thing, if I'm Clemson, I wouldn't get real lazy just expecting Georgia to run out the clock because if you hand it to Todd Gurley and he gets a block or two, yeah. might change the whole game again. Trying to get the clock reset. Now they've got it. Fans are getting anxious. So final 21 seconds. Here is Gurley, but there's flags down. This might be the longest final minute of any half so far in this opening college football week. It's nice to set records for something. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine, folks. So now we're down to 11 seconds remaining at the 13 yard line. Again, on that false start, they were going to run Gurley. Let's see if he gets the handle here. If there's a snap at all. And there won't be. So the clock runs out to end a good first half. A lot of big plays in the first half. Clemson got the early lead. Prime time presented by Hampton Hotels, part of Dick Sporting Goods. Kickoff week. We're exactly where we were a year ago. Only that one was in Death Valley at halftime. 21-21. And an exciting first half with a lot of big plays. A few big mistakes as well. Welcome back, Brad Nestler and Todd Blackledge. Partner, I don't get it. <laughs> Todd Gurley's arguably the best tailback in yeah. the country. He's carried it four times. He's touched it five times. He's got 144 <laughs> yards, and you as a team had 113 yards of offense in the first half. They didn't Give want the football. They didn't want him to handle yeah. it on the kick return here as Georgia opens up the third quarter. Both quarterbacks look pretty good for yeah. Clemson, and I thought uh, Mason did a nice job for Georgia. You know, I, I really did. I thought the, the quarterbacks played well when Clemson you know they ran twice as many plays as Georgia did they had 254 yards of offense very productive with both quarterbacks in there but when you get to Georgia who we're going to see first on offense you got to give the ball to number three I mean he's the best player on the field he wants the ball that's what Mark Rick told Holly at halftime he only touched it five times in the first half I would put it in his hands 20 times here in the second half they fake it to him on the opening play and they throw back to Rome the tight end he picks up about four. J. Ron Curse holding on for dear life on the big tight end. So it'll bring up second down and six. Now it's Gurley up the middle. He's got a first down and he almost broke it. He did get to the second level. 
Again, Curse had to make the stop, but a pickup of nine. See, the thing about him at 225 pounds, if he has his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage, even if you have an unblocked man in the hole, it still takes a man to tackle him. Mason fires on the sideline. Wide open is Bennett. Made one man miss, but then trips. And still, he's down to the 31-yard line. First down, Georgia. Play action. Show Gurley. Draw the linebackers in. And then throw the ball on the outside. Good execution that time by Hudson Mason. Now, it didn't take Georgia long to get into Clemson territory. Just inside the 32-yard line. The other thing that Georgia has not done tonight is they've not thrown the ball to Todd Gurley. Last year, 37 catches, six of those for touchdowns on the season. Yeah, they tried that one screen pass, and that yeah. was blown up by the Clemson defense. Gurley straight ahead to the 28th. Josh Watson made the tackle. Todd Gurley had a sensational freshman season. Holly mentioned earlier he missed three games and a portion of a fourth and still had 989 yards rushing. But his freshman season was sensational. To be short of the first half, five yard pickup by Towns. Robert Smith made the stop. Nice drive here to start the third quarter for Georgia. Manageable third downs. Moving the football. And now it's Gurley. First down, quite a bit more. Taking the linebacker, Anthony, with him for a ride of 11. I mean, it's just not rocket science. Good blocking. Watch the receivers. Watch Towns, number nine, come in. Boom, big block right there. Gurley gets in behind it. Greg Pike, the right guard, with a nice block. If he's fresh and he wants the ball, feed the big fellow the ball. First down at the 13-yard line. He gets it again. And Gurley close to the 10. You know, it's funny. Clemson with the pooch kick to keep it out of his hands to open up. The third quarter, but they can't keep it out of his hands right. when Mason just keeps handing it to him. Well, he had four carries in the first half. Now he's coming out now. How many now in the second half? Is that three carries? Four carries to start the second half. I mean, now he needs a break, and you bring someone else in. And it's Keith Marshall, and he ain't bad either. Second down and eight. Marshall's turn. Stopped. Maybe a yard gain if they give him forward progress. And Grady Jarrett, again, a nose man, number 50. Boy, he's been a thorn in Georgia's side now for two years. He's a guy that grew up wanting to play for the Dogs. They didn't offer him a scholarship, and he's made him pay ever since. Well, you look at him, he doesn't fit the specs of a typical defensive tackle. He's only 6'1", about 295 pounds. But Hart doesn't show up on those measurements, That's and he right. plays with great heart. Let's see if Mason goes to the air on third and seven. Pumps over the middle. Bennett broken up. Bennett has hands on it. He might have run out of real estate either way. Robert Smith was there and is still down in the back of the end zone. Yeah, both safeties collided there. Robert Smith and J. Ron Curse on their way to the football. Both. The safeties are still on the turf. Well, Mason took a shot and it was a pretty good throw. He put it where only either Bennett could get it or it would be incomplete and a collision back there with the two safeties. As Bennett ended up in the end zone hedges trying to make this grab. I think Robert Smith got his hand in there. And Curse came over and knocked the ball out with contact. And I think Curse, I think Robert Smith's hand is what got caught up in the uh, in the collision there. Georgia already has their field goal unit on the field. They're just waiting for the Clemson players to be attended to. Marshall Morgan, one of the best kickers, not just in the SEC, but in the country, is patiently waiting until the Clemson safety comes to his feet. And Smith, one of the veteran guys. He's a guy that grew up, wanted to be a quarterback at Clemson, dreamed of being the next Woody Dantzler who played in the 
late 90s early 2000s for Clemson. And he's pretty good safety right now and he's apparently OK and that's good. So it brings up fourth down and seven and Marshall Morgan you saw his numbers from a year ago only missed two. One was outside of 50. This is a 27 yard field goal attempt. And it's right down the middle. So the opening drive of the third quarter. Bulldogs drive it deep. Clemson made a stop, but still the dogs get. Marshall Morgan, who just hit the 27 yard field goal, his first of the year to kick off. And he hits this one into the end zone, two yards deep. T.J. Green will bring it out. And he got out across the 20 as we check in with Holly. Well, both quarterbacks for Clemson had success in the first half, and Dabo Sweeney said they're going to continue with that same pattern. Cole Stout will start this second half, but Deshaun Watson could come in in scripted moments if they need him to, depending on how the game goes. He said, really, I think we're playing our butts off. I really think the only problem we had was the missed field goal and the kickoff return. He said, we've really been Tim team is playing here between the hedges. Yeah, just two special teams mistakes. Yeah. Giving up the kickoff return and way wide left on what should have been a makeable field goal. Yeah, their offense controlled the first half. Twice as many plays as Georgia ran. Stout the wide out screen to Humphreys and he weaves his way out around the 29 where Rameek Wilson tracked him down. <laughs> Humphreys, the guy that caught 41 passes a year ago for the Tigers. Of course they had the big play guys and Sammy Watkins and Martavis Bryant and they go right back to him and this time Georgia waiting for him and Quincy Mauger a sophomore out of Marietta Georgia made the hit Georgia would love a stop on the opening Tiger drive no more than that guy would their defensive coordinator and the fans 92 thousand strong. Third and four. Clemson almost snapped it. Georgia was showing blitz. And they might back out of it now. Stout got pressure in the pocket. Wow, how did he get out of there? Didn't get the first down, though. Picked up three and took a pretty good shot at the end of the play. Great inside rush by Leonard Floyd. He'd been kind of quiet. An outstanding freshman season. Watch number 84 split right between two linemen right into the face of Cole Stout. That forces him out of the pocket and Stout did what he could but came up short of the first down. But Leonard Floyd with the quick inside pressure busted up that play. ESPN.com had him as a first team All-American and they only picked three linebackers and he's only a sophomore. So they thought pretty highly of him too. Nice kick. Davis has to fair catch this one back around the 20 yard line. 50 yard punt, no return. We'll return with 9.33 to go, and Georgia up by three. Frankie Sink, which was also a Heisman Trophy winner here at Georgia back in the 40s. And there's Rush, a good nine, looking on. His team up three. Mason is going to run this one. Nobody open, just got what he could and then got down. That's a win. You know, a first down run, you gain four yards or more. Three receivers to the right for Mason. He goes that way on a wide out screen to the freshman McKenzie, and he's got a first down. You can see he's got some quickness. Yeah. Well, and as you mentioned earlier, two of the receivers that are out with injury are more the speed guys. That's why I think we're seeing McKenzie, we're seeing Michelle in the in the offensive game plan, trying to add a little more quickness in to their passing game. They come the other way, same play. McKenzie again, and he's planted by a form tackle from Jaron Curse. We mentioned Malcolm Mitchell being one of those speed guys that's out. He missed last year with a torn ACL in a freak incident on Todd Gurley's 75 yard touchdown in celebrating in the end zone with Gurley. He blew out his knee so. They've been a little cautious about celebration since then here in Athens. Tavares Barnes is the guy that's down might be a cramp it's it's been hot all day. I mean. Even up here in the booth. Pretty sticky. Uh, 
Well, we've got a second here, and we try to cool things off. Let's heat things up with Reese Davis. Reese. Well, we saw him light up the night in the Sugar Bowl last Boy, year. We Four touchdown passes. So he's starting where he ended. And maybe this isn't a cramp. This doesn't look real good for the senior out of Jacksonville. And he started for Corey Crawford, who was going through a one game suspension here and not playing. And they really like Brent Venable said so he was like a different guy between spring and summer had come that far and now goes off and leaves their defensive line a little thinner. Second down at six. Gurley broke a tackle another still on his feet all the way to the 48 yard line another 19 yards by the big guy. 226 pounds when he gets his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage and he's not running sideways very hard to bring down not going to bring him down with an arm tackle breaks two on that play and turns it into a big game ledge even when he's in the open field he's got great body lean yep. he never stands up straight Nick Chubb the freshman in for the first time for Georgia another highly touted running back gives Gurley a breather. Let's see if they put it in his hands for the first time. They fake it to him. Mason was going to take off. Nice decision. That's two plays on this drive on first down where he didn't like what he saw and he makes a quick decision to run and then it becomes a running play and a positive win play because he gains positive yards. No hesitation on the decision to run. That's good heads up play by Hudson Mason. You know a lot of people think that he's not that good a runner Aaron Murray was pretty nifty with his feet but both Mark Richt and Mike Bobo told us yesterday hey Hudson Mason is a little bit shiftier than you think yeah. he is and he showed it on those two runs and Beasley he goes out and that might be a cramping situation as well he appears to be ready to come back in but he's going to take at least a playoff here and meanwhile Georgia's got second down and three at the Clemson 41. And Nick Chubb's first carry as a Bulldog is going to be for a loss of one. Grady Jarrett again from his inside tackle position. You know, the Georgia coaches told us yesterday they, they think their center David Andrews is a pretty good player. Last year they said there was only one guy that handled him and caused problems and created havoc for him and for the offense and that was in this game against Clemson last year in Death Valley. Got a flag down. Very explosive and disruptive player. You know, we, we we come into the game talking about Vic Beasley, and he has not been a factor tonight so far for the Clemson defense because Georgia's pass Single offense, they have not the held the ball. They're gonna call a chop block on Blake Tibbs, a wide receiver. And they were talking with Dabo Sweeney. Do you want to take the penalty or not? And there's the hit right there on Curse. And so they gave Dabo the option, taking the penalty or taking the down, and they back it up all the way to the 44-yard line of Georgia. Where it's going to be second down and 18. Mason wanted to throw has to get rid of it now incomplete out of bounds got some late pressure roll to his left now it's third down in a mile well and again you're thinking right now if you're Hudson Mason game management third down and a long way to go don't get too risky don't take a, a bad chance of throwing into coverage Get part of this yardage back if you can, and there's nothing wrong with punting the football. Obviously, if they give it to you, you take it, but if it's not there, get positive yardage, punt the football, and play defense. Bennett, the bottom of your screen has been his number one target. They will keep it on the ground, and 
And Chubb, the freshman, whoa, lost his hat. And he's all the way inside of 40. They told us he was a tough little son of a gun, and he showed it there. Well, Mike Bobo's words were, he is a heavy runner. Meaning when he hits you, he's got some pop to it. And he's hard to bring down. He runs with great leverage and a great low center of gravity. And you saw it all in that play right there. Nick out of Cedartown. And had unbelievable numbers. The play is dead when his helmet comes off. Had unbelievable numbers in high school. Almost 2,700 yards on the ground and 41 touchdowns. So he's the future. He and Sony Michelle after Marshall and Gurley are done here. And as Todd said, nothing wrong with a punt. It's fourth down and five. Adam Erickson is going to punt it this time instead of Colin Barber. Kind of an end over end job. He usually it gets these bounce to bounce back. backwards, yep. and there it comes, and it's beautiful down at the six yard line. That's why they've got two punters one that can blast it, and one that can. And, and what they like to do is create confusion in your pass protections. You don't know where pressure's coming. It's not necessarily an all out blitz because they're playing zone coverage behind it, but they attack your protection. They create confusion, not just for the quarterback, but for the offensive linemen. And if they can get you into third down and six, seven, or more, they have an advantage. And that's always the way it's been at Alabama. It's the way it was at Florida State last year. And that's what he hopes to do here in Georgia. Worst starting field position for the Tigers, their own seven. Draw play. Play it conservatively. Only got a yard for Davidson. Ramique Wilson in on the stop. So it'll be second down. And almost nine, a long eight. Humphreys again will be in motion. They'll keep it on the ground. Second effort got C.J. Davidson a couple, but that's about it. And now they're in that shot, that situation that Todd was just talking about. Third down and long. Herrera, Herrera is the guy that's down right now. Senior out of College Park, Georgia. Yeah, Davidson's not up yet either. Well, Herrera, pretty important piece to this defensive puzzle. Team high, 31 career starts counting tonight. He was the coach's defensive MVP on this Georgia team a year ago. Had 112 tackles and. He lost some weight in the offseason. Yeah, I think that's been the case in reading their notes, that, that that's been the case with several of their players. I think that was part of the new defensive staff's emphasis. Maybe a couple guys a little bit too big, carrying a little bit too much weight. Herrera was like that. Jordan Jenkins dropped 20 pounds, went from 272 to 252. Playing think, a little bit faster. I think Amarlo just lost a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> on whatever he's been drinking or if he had anything quickly to eat at halftime. He's got eight tackles tonight. And he's going to have to take a little breather over there. So again, what Georgia has had some success with on third down is showing one thing, trying to draw the call from the sideline, and then changing what they do pressure-wise. Third and five. Stout inside his own five and in trouble. Had to get rid of it, just unloaded it. A penalty marker down. That's holding. That's offensive holding. And it could be a safety if the penalty was in the end zone. The quarterback was in the end zone. I don't know that the holding, the, the penalty at the spot of the foul was not in the end zone. It was a little stunt. The ends came inside. The tackles worked outside. And Jordan Jenkins is the guy that came free to put the pressure on Stout. Tom Rutter with the call. Holding on the offense. The penalties declined. Fourth down. And brings up a fourth down and a punting situation from deep in Tiger territory again. That time it was just a straight four man rush with a twist game. They, they didn't line up and try to show one thing. They lined up in a four man rush, 
but they ran stunts on both sides and the pressure created confusion for Clemson. Reggie Davis has done a pretty good job for Georgia on the returns of punts tonight as Todd mentioned under three yards of return a year ago was worst in the SEC for the Bulldogs and he's got a backpedal to get this one at the 37 and goes down at the 40 so only a three yard return on that one as well 511 remaining in the third quarter time for our half lack trivia question Aaron Murray was drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs in 2014 who was the last quarterback drafted by the Chiefs to win a game boy that's a tough one <laughs> only problem is I know the answer we'll give you the answer here coming up in a minute as Georgia takes over well, I think it's Todd Gurley time too. time for the Aflac time for Todd Gurley again. Got a little rest in that last possession. They fake it to him and Mason dropped the ball and who's on top of it. George is going to keep it. But they lost yardage there at the five minute mark of the third quarter. I don't know if he hit somebody. As he was trying to get rid of this, or he just, just lost slipped it. out. Yeah, it just slipped slipped. out. Yep. It's not going to be a perfectly dry ball when it's this warm, and your center's sweating all over it. So it's second down at 14. Clemson showing blitz off the corner. They bring the linebacker. Gurley picks that up, and the throws out to Chris Conley. Good for 12. Yep. Good decision there. Second down and long. Don't worry about trying to get all the yardage back in one throw. Now you give yourself a chance on third down where run or pass is possible. And it's going to be Gurley, and Clemson knew that was coming. Nice job by the defensive front. Kevin Dodd with the stop on third down. That was, now, that was the previous second play. Second down. But on third down and two, they stuffed Gurley for actually a loss of a yard. It's a good defensive series. They got kidding. the negative play on first down, and then they get the stop on third and short on Gurley. Colin Barber to punt. You know, he got all of this one too. Humphreys just gets out of the way. Can Georgia cover it? Swan tried to keep it in play, did he? Oh boy, what a great play. But it's all for naught. Ball was batted out of the end zone, therefore, by rule, we have a touchback. Just that close. What a great effort, though. His foot's in the end zone, second foot's in the end zone. He got it back out of there, but it'll bring out to the 20 yard line for Clemson offensively. Deshaun Watson back in now through a touchdown pass earlier. Highly touted freshman out of Gainesville, Georgia. And he's going to throw. No, he's going to run. He can do both and did so sensationally through his high school career. Got four there. That was good discipline by the Georgia defense. That play right there is kind of reminiscent of stuff that Auburn does. Ole Miss does where they. They bring the quarterback down the line like he's going to run, but they also release a receiver down the field. And if you bite on the quarterback run, they throw it right over your head for a big play. That was good discipline by the Georgia defense. Second down and six. DJ Howard. And he got about three before Ray Drew made the stop. And it'll bring up another third down, but this one shorter. Down to 239 or am I getting in the third quarter? Might not be a bad spot for a called quarterback draw here with Watson. You've had a little trouble the last few third down plays. You have a better dual threat guy in the game right now. He's going to fire it on the sideline, but he went high this time, intended 
for Damari Kitt, another freshman. And he had Kitt actually open, but he overthrew him. Third straight, three and out. Let's see if the freshman stopped his route over there on the side. Little well, indecision, I he, guess. He does want to stop his route, it, but it may be a little bit deeper. In between the corner and the safety, there is a soft spot out there. I'm not so sure the receiver didn't do the right thing, just a little bit overthrown by Watson. So pinion to punt. And Davis will have to take a fair catch around the 33 yard line. There's both Clemson quarterbacks. Both major contributors tonight, but right now their team is down three. Between the hedges and Athens. Seesaw game back and forth between the Tigers and the Bulldogs. There's a little push to Keith Marshall. Trying to make the first guy miss, but he couldn't. Nice job defensively. On the edge by Beasley. I mentioned the depth too of this Clemson defensive line, rotating a lot of guys in there, keeping fresh bodies. Georgia goes with a little pace here, giving it to Marshall again. This time he got out near the 40. So it's going to be another third down. And Marshall, a little gimpy, getting up after that play. Of course, he's coming off knee surgery. That's the last thing they want to see is him limping off. Todd Gurley comes back in on third down and four. And there he is. Two touchdowns tonight, one on the ground, one on a 100-yard kickoff return. Hudson Mason will try to throw for this first down, and he got it complete. Jeb Blazevich, a freshman tight end who the coaches are really high on, has his first catch as a Bulldog. Boy, he showed great discipline on this route. Watch Blazevich, number 83, sit down, show the, t the quarterback his numbers. Hudson Mason had to get rid of that football. Good pressure on the inside. And a nice conversion. Blazevich showing discipline on that route. Here's a toss sweep to Gurley. He's done most of his damage going left tonight. He gets a couple and crosses the midfield stripe. First quarter was sensational for Clemson. Not so much since. Three wide receivers set here for Mason. Sony Michelle, one of those freshmen tailbacks, flanking him in the Georgia backfield. He's just going to loft this one, and Michelle forgot to turn around. It's a lot to ask of a freshman back, you know, to, to come in on passing situations, to know pass protections as well as your basic runs. Hudson Mason was expecting Michelle to look quick on that one because there was pressure coming. Third down and eight from the 49. Mason making sure if Clemson brings the blitz that somebody helps out. Here they come. Going to throw it on the sideline intended for Bennett and Mason threw it out. And Bennett was still running a streak and completes fourth down. So sort of an empty possession there yeah. for Georgia. Humphreys again trots out as a punt return man. Surprise they're using Colin Barber. This would be the spot where Erickson hit. Well, Barber hit it a mile in the air. Maybe they knew what they were doing. They did. Same kind of results. That one bounced backwards, too. And this will be right around the eight yard line. So back to back punts that have pinned Clemson deep in a hole inside their own 10 yard line. Well, a little bit earlier, we asked you the Aflac trivia question, which was. Aaron Murray was drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs 2014 and he made the team because the roster came out today. He was the last quarterback drafted by the Chiefs 
to win a game. My partner. My partner. How, to, was it search, early in the season or late? Search long and hard to find that stat. Yeah. Oh. Drafted by the Chiefs and went on to win some games. Yeah, won a few. Won yeah. a few. Ended up Good with career. the Steelers. Cliff yep. Stout was a longtime right. Steeler. Right. So we got everything kind of tied together with our quarterbacks, both in the stands, in the booth, on the field, and on the Kansas City roster. And our congratulations, Aaron Murray, for making the team. This is Davidson, and he's got a first down. Nice run. Speaking of quarterbacks, Taj Boyd, from what we understand, did not make the Jets team as their cuts came out today. Taj, uh, most prolific passer in Clemson history. I know he's probably watching the game, and Taj, I'm telling you, you're going to get a call if you haven't already because you're too good not to have somebody have you on their roster or their practice squad, so keep your chin up. We played three. Hug is loving it. Fans are loving it. George is loving it. They can hold the lead. They're up by three. Cole Stout under pressure. Down he goes. A flag down. Probably a holding. And a sack by Josh Dawson. Well, it's Leonard Floyd again. The sophomore out of Eastman, Georgia, drew two blockers. He's the one that created the problem in the pocket. And he was uh, definitely wrestled down. They're going to take the sack, decline the penalty, because it's all the way down inside the 15 anyway. Watch Leonard Floyd come off the top of the screen. Just beats the right tackle, Joe Gore. And ends up getting tackled right in front of the referee. Now the crowd really into it. Second down and 17. Goldman's in the backfield with Stout. And he's going to run a quarterback draw. And it's going to be Floyd that drags him down. Well, this Clemson offense ran 27 plays for 254 yards in the first half. In the second half, very little productivity out of Chad Morris's offense. Field position has played a part of that, but only 24 yards of offense here in the second half. Oh, it's getting noisy. They're not going to get it off. I don't think, well, they called the timeout from the sideline. Cole Stout was not going to get the timeout called in time, but Dabo Sweeney did it for him. And they ran out of time because the Georgia crowd, 92,000 strong, was so loud that Stout was trying to get the message to his offensive line and couldn't get it done in time. They're in for another earful right here. And the guy who's been the disruptor is right here, Leonard Floyd, number 84. Blitz coming from the secondary. Stout over the middle, caught but short of a first down as Wayne Goldman came out of the backfield and picked up 10. Yeah. And but if Stout could have hit him in stride, Goldman would have picked up the first down. Stout knew pressure was coming. He didn't get enough on that throw, and Goldman had to go down low to make the catch. Otherwise, Clemson gets a new set of downs. So Pinion's got to kick it. Reggie Davis has done a nice job as a return man. Nothing flashy, but yeah. he's had a couple decent returns tonight. And you just get the feel that Georgia needs to take advantage of the field position edge that they've had here in the second half. They only have a three-point lead to show for it so far. Now Pinion's trying to blast him out wow. of field position. Great kick back at the 13. Davis fields it there, and he only gets back to the 17. I'll tell you what, these all three putters yeah. that we've seen tonight have done a great job. And Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week continues tonight when we're done. Number 14, Wisconsin taking on number 13, LSU in the 2014 Advocare Texas kickoff. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels tonight at 9 on ESPN and live on Watch ESPN. Another one of the great interconference matchups that we've had in week one. Alabama has beaten West Virginia in the Chick-fil-A kickoff classic tonight or this afternoon actually when it started. We're in the SEC-ACC battle here of top 16 teams, Georgia number 12, Clemson number 16, and we got LSU and the Badgers coming up when we're done. We talked about Todd Gurley, Melvin Gordon for Wisconsin, one of the other premier backs in college football. 
Here is Todd Gurley. Pickup of two. And Gurley now 12 carries for 91 yards. He had 12 carries for 154 in last year's game, including a 75 yard touchdown romp. But remember, the other time he got his hands on it tonight, he went 100 yards on a kick off return for a score. Give it to him again, and he might be off to the races again. Todd Gurley, midfield. They've got the angle on him, but he's got another big one. Well, this was a huge hole. Great blocking on the inside zone play. And watch John Theus, number 71, the left tackle, kind of get to the second level and pick off a linebacker. That's excellent blocking. Michael Bennett downfield getting a block. Good read by Gurley, but really good job by the Georgia offensive line climbing to the second level for blocks. Gurley gets a breather after 38 yards. And here's Michelle, the freshman, and he stretches out, gets a good gain of six. Now again, you just see the depth of talent that Georgia has at running back with Gurley and Marshall, then the two young guys, Michelle and Chubb. And you just know that when you get to a game like this, a hot night in the fourth quarter, you think you can wear them down with fresh backs. And that's what Georgia, I think, is going to try to do right here. Todd's got his 14th career 100-yard rushing game in a Georgia uniform. And there's miscommunication, and that might be the freshman's fault. Yeah. Either he went the wrong way or Mason did, and I'd be guessing it's number one that went the wrong way. Yeah, that would be my guess, too. A lot to learn in a short amount of time for those kids that are 18 years old and playing in a big time college football game for the first time. Third down and three big third down for both teams here. Michelle trying to get to the edge. He got there and he's down the sideline. He held on to that one and he went the right way and see that's tired legs on a defense versus fresh legs with a, a, a third running back. You keep pounding away, you wear them down, and the fresh legs get outside the defense. And Curse had to save the touchdown. Bad leverage by the Clemson defense, but I got to believe fatigue played a part in that and the wrong angles that were taken there. Five straight runs, and with Gurley back in there, number six might be coming up because he's got his fullback, Maxi in front of him. Just outside the 18 yard line. Hicks the H back moving around. They're going to lead the way. Gurley broke a tackle. Gurley heading to the end zone. Third touchdown of the night for number three. And that was a complete breakdown by the Clemson defense. That was all Todd Gurley seeing a lack of coverage on the backside and turning it into a touchdown. Extra point is good. And for the first time tonight, somebody's got a double digit lead. And it's the hometown dog. What you're going to see when you play defense against a great back, you have to be gap sound. You have to guard all the gaps. There's about three gaps in here unaccounted for, and Gurley sees it and says, I'm not going to the right. I'm going right this way, back this side to the end zone. You got to be gap sound, and I think the fatigue has started to take its toll on the Clemson defense. Marshall Morgan to kick off, as now Georgia has a double digit lead. This one will be returnable. T.J. Green from the four. Oh, did he get pasted? The ball came out. They're calling it a fumble. They threw the beanbag down. I thought he was down. What a hit. Tim Kimbrough, number 42. Georgia ball. Wow. The Georgia coaches are going crazy next to us. What a oh. hit by Kimbrough. I think he was down. Yeah, I, I thought he was down when it happened. We'll get another look from another angle. 
I thought his body was down when the ball came out. He really got blasted, and now there's his elbow He's down. down. He's down. Great hit, great effort by Kimbrough, but he was down. With a fumble recovered by Georgia, that play is under further review. I'll tell you what, for a team that took their lumps, talking about special teams yeah. last year, they played really well tonight. Absolutely. Again, I think that's been part of the emphasis of the new defensive coaching staff. Different responsibilities in the kicking game as well. A renewed emphasis. <laughs> Kimbrough's going to remember that one for a long time. I think they're going to take the fumble recovery back by Keith Marshall, but he'll still take the hit. And T.J. Green's going to be thinking about this one for about a month. Wow. And a good solid hit. Wasn't with the head, it was with the shoulder. Good technique, shoulder tackle, wrapped up with the arms. Can't do it any better. Nope. The bottom line is the Georgia defense has made some beautiful adjustments in the second half, and they have throttled the Clemson offense. Well, that's not considered an offensive play. It's right. a kick return, but Clemson's second half, 10 plays, 39 yards, one first down. And they need some offense now because they're down 10 and there's 10 22 to go and, and the thing about it remember early in the game I said how Jeremy Pruitt as much as anything he needed to get some confidence breathed into this defense they've got talent but they didn't have a whole lot of belief in themselves I don't think well now they look completely different than they did in the first half they look like a group who believes they're going to get stops every possession. Jeremy part of an entirely new defensive staff for Georgia that's almost unheard of it hasn't happened here in 50 years yeah. and the reason it happened then is because it was Vince Dooley's that's first year as head the coach was down prior to losing the ball therefore it's Clemson's ball 17 yard line first down now well, fans don't like it but that's the right call yep and we made this point also I mean I think they've made great adjustments but field position has been in Georgia's favor the entire game. Yep. Clemson has had 13 offensive drives. Their average starting field position has been their own 18 yard line. That, that wears on you, especially on the road with crowd noise and everything like that. It's the eighth time they're starting inside their own 20. In this case, the 17. And now Georgia might want to pin their ears back a little bit. Leonard Floyd got some pressure. Jordan Jenkins cleaned up. And stopped trying to run it. Got a short gain. Actually, no gain. Well, if you're Cole Stout and if you're the Clemson offense, you can't panic at this point. There's still 10 minutes left in the football game. Stout out in the flat to Howard, and he's going to be dropped for a loss by Herrera. And that's his ninth tackle. See, they're just locked down on Clemson right now. Clemson's not threatening the Georgia defense vertically at all. Georgia is closing and squatting on everything. And then on third down, they're able to create pressure on the quarterback. Wouldn't Clemson love to have Sammy Watkins about oh boy. up Aaron Davis hit him in the back looking for a flag is second year but he's not going to get one that's a case where the DB doesn't necessarily get his head turned but he got he did. it turned enough yeah. he got it turned enough and he got that right hand making a play on the football just enough to knock yep. it away and now pinion Pin back at his own goal line again. And again, it's field position that Todd was talking about. Pinion's helped the cause with some blasting punts tonight. He needs another one here. Reggie Davis will field at midfield and tripped up. Nice coverage. Boy, great coverage. Great job by Robert Smith down there on the special teams to make the tackle because there was some room over there on the far sideline for Davis. 9.05 to play. Georgia in Clemson territory up 10.
confidence in the Georgia defense has played a big part as well. Georgia's got Nick Chubb, the freshman, in a tailback. They're going to toss it to him. Chubb running over people. Cuts back inside the 30. Chubb down the sideline. First Georgia touchdown for the freshman. The coaches kept telling us he's a tough guy to bring down, and Clemson didn't. Well, and this Clemson defense played pretty well in the first half. They've run out of gas, I think, here in the second half. Missed tackles, missed assignments, missed gap responsibilities, and fresh backs, fresh legs, fresh backs from the Georgia backfield has taken its toll. Extra point good. 38-21. A lot of people said, hey, he played at a smaller classification. That's why he ran up such big high school numbers. Well, guess what? 47 yards for his first Bulldog touchdown. Oh. See, just too many missed tackles. Now it's a great individual effort by Chubb. But this is a tired Clemson defense. You're going to see a couple guys, the center. David Andrews is going to come out here. Watch Bennett come inside and block, and then the, the fullback, Maxie. These guys are all on their men. They're taking the angles away, and then one or two missed tackles, and a five- or six-yard gain turns into a big touchdown for Nick Chubb. And how about David Andrews, the center, getting downfield after he saw him break that first tackle. Number 61 is going to come into play here. Say, come on, man, I got you. Well, we said there was a lot of depth in the Georgia backfield. Uh, yep, yeah. doesn't matter which side they run on for the most part. But you know what? It started with Gurley getting it four times in the first possession of the third quarter after only running it four times in the whole first half. That kind of set the tone for the second half. He did most of the damage, but now they've taken the, the life out of the legs of the Clemson defense with their run game. Georgia averaged 170 yards on the ground per game last year. They've got 246 right now. And Clemson's time is running out unless they can find some fourth quarter offense. Green, who got popped on his last kick return, trying to cut this one outside and does. P.J. Green, good return. Out across the 45 and a flag. Not sure there might not be a horse collar at the end of that play. It shows you something about Green. Now, he got popped on that last one, and he had no hesitation to return that kickoff. During the return, holding the number nine, receiving team, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Well, that negates a great run back. But nonetheless, super effort. There's the hold right there. Number nine. Got a hold of the back of the jersey. That's the first special teams penalty of the game for either team. So Clemson has to back up, and again, they're inside their own 20 for the ninth time. They start a drive. Stout play action flips it out. Short gain, if any, to J.J. McCullough. Again, at some point, somebody's got to make a big play here for Clemson. See, and the problem for Clemson is they've not threatened this Georgia defense vertically down the field yep. for a long time. They hit a couple throws in the first half, nothing down the field to stretch the defense. And Stout gets mugged by Floyd again. What a game 84's had. It. Yeah, second half, he has really come to life. They've put him in different positions. They've moved him around. And he has created some problems. He's on another stunt. This time he's outside, just beats the right tackle. Joe Gore uses that leverage and that quickness to get to Stout. Third and 16. Blitz, Stout. Incomplete. Had to throw it from his own end zone, and he was backpedaling. See, if you're a quick pass rusher, you love playing at home. 
because your home crowd is going to make a ton of noise on a third and long, and that offensive tackle has no chance against a speed rusher. That's why Vic Beasley had such a big night against Georgia last year in Clemson and has been relatively a non-factor tonight. But Leonard Floyd is using a quick first step and the crowd noise to his advantage on third down to wreak havoc on this Clemson offense. Pinion again from his own goal line. Davis. He took a big hit. Took a chance by not fair catching that one. And Tony Stewart let him have it on the special teams. But he did hang on to it. 39 yard punt, no return. And again, oh, they were up about 50 when I quit watching. <laughs> nice luxury to have when you're up yeah. 50. <laughs> right now, Georgia's got the luxury of being up 17. And they are playing with house money right now with 7.44 to go. Todd Gurley back in at tailback. The toss to him. And he broke Boy, free again, yeah. and Todd Gurley down the sideline and gone. I think he might be on his way to being an All-American. I'm sure Dad thinks so, too. One Todd making another one happy. 51 yards, touchdown, and a new career high. Extra point is good. Todd Gurley had four carries in the first half. He has gotten the ball often in the second half, and boy, has he made the most of his touches. If you didn't see Todd and I right before the start of the third quarter, when we were on camera, I said, how come this guy hadn't carried the ball more? Uh, I don't think the Georgia coaches were listening to us, but they have taken to number three and fed the big dog. Let's check in with Holly. Guys, it has been so interesting to observe Todd Gurley on the sidelines tonight. He is a very quiet guy. He doesn't like talking to the media. He's even a little bit shy. But he has been engaged, very emotional, very energetic with his teammates. After his first long touchdown run, he went and sat in the offensive line meeting where the coach normally sits, gave them a lot of love. I've seen him sprint out to the hash marks to encourage the defense on certain series. And then when the freshman Chubb had his touchdown, he was right there, gave him a big, huge hug. He has been energetic, engaging, and so involved in this game. Yeah, but on top of that, Ollie, he's been leading the cheers with a towel when the defense was out there at times, too, to the crowd. You know, the only thing that I would be a little bit concerned about, that not with Gurley, but earlier in the game, we saw Keith Marshall come out of the game and, and a little bit hobbled, and he has not come back in. They've gone to Chubb. They've gone to Michelle. I just wonder if Keith Marshall tweaked his knee a little bit more in this game because ultimately to get where they want to go this year they need him healthy as well. They're going to have a pooch kick here and a fair catch made by the Clemson special teams and Jordan Leggett as we check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Deshaun Watson in at quarterback. As Clemson's trying to get something going offensively in this half. As time is running out, we're under seven and a half minutes. Well, that's the 20th play that Clemson has run in the second half, and they've gained all of 32 yards. So one first down. It's just been a dominant defensive effort with the advantage of field position, but outstanding defensive play by Jeremy Pruitt's troops here in the second half. Watson, a lot of pressure on his shoulders right now, trying to make something happen. Just a freshman. And he's in trouble, and down he goes. And it's Leonard Floyd again. And if anybody's played as well as Todd Gurley has on offense and on special teams tonight, it's been that guy on defense. 
Well, they just have Clemson where they want him right now. I mean, they, they know Clemson has to throw. The running game is really of no threat at this point. And so you attack the protections, you bring pressure in different ways, but you still play zone behind it. And that's tough for a young quarterback. Yep. And this again, third down and 19, the longest third down situation of the night for him. And he's going down again. And it's Kimbrough this time. Nope, it's Herrera. In the first half, Clemson was 7 of 13 converting on third down. They're 0 for 7 in the third quarter, or in the second half, and the last four third downs have been third and 15, third and 13, third and 16, and that last one, third and 19. I don't even care if you had Taj Boyd right. and Sammy Watkins. Yeah. You're still going to struggle on third down when you have that kind of yardage. Pinion in his own end zone again. Tenth punt coming up. Getting a tired leg. McKenzie, the freshman. They wanted to get him a look as a punt return man, and they got it. And he made the best of it. 22-yard <laughs> return by the little guy. Todd Gurley tonight has done it all. Well, I tell you, he started out early in the game making most of his yardage running to the left. Good blocking by his fullback, Maxi. Good blocking by the wide receivers. Then he had the kickoff return for 100 yards. That was what he did in the first half. In the second half, he has worn down the Clemson defense. He's had four touchdowns on the night. This one, the most recent. 51 yards after breaking tackles and then turning on the speed. And outrunning the Tigers secondary. He's getting a breather now, as is Keith Marshall. And they're going to give the fullback a little sugar. Quavon Hicks and down near the 20. Quavon, they got a little package for him as fullback. He's playing some H-back this year. They lost their regular fullback, Merritt Hall. Uh, just had too many concussions in his season. And career at Georgia is over, and they really loved him because he was a great blocker leading the way for some of the tailbacks they have. So Quavon's kind of done the job tonight along with Taylor Maxey, and they both played very well. Under five minutes now, and the dog's trying to milk the clock yeah. here a little bit. You stay in the huddle as long as you can. You don't want to ruin your team's tempo and timing, but you want to stay in the huddle and use as much clock as you can. And again, it's Hicks, and they give it to him again, and he rumbles for a pickup of five and a first down as we check in with Holly. Just to update Keith Marshall's health, he did come over limping on the sidelines a few series ago. He spoke with two different athletic trainers. They did not treat him at all. Guys, he did return for at least one special teams play that I've seen, so he has been back out there, just not at running back, so hopefully there's no significant injury to him. That's a good point, Holly. I think he's the guy that would have recovered the fumble on the kickoff return by Green been yeah. upheld but it wasn't so well that's good that's to a know. good sign yeah it's good for him and good for Georgia because again you know playing in this league and the week in week out toil that that takes on a running back you need multiple guys and Marshall and Gurley when they're at their best this Georgia offense is tough and this one's blown dead well we said about all start offense not all 11 players were set. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Ledge, we said about three and a half hours ago when we opened up the show that the Clemson defense would test the Georgia offensive line that had to replace guys, different starters at three different spots. Right. They played well enough that some of the backups are in there getting yeah. some love right now. Yeah, I thought the Georgia offensive line did a nice job. That, that starting unit protected their quarterback. They opened up running holes and eventually they wore down this Clemson defense. First down at 15 after the penalty. Toss sweep to Michelle. And he got five of it back and then some. Todd Gurley tonight. With four touchdowns and more yardage than the Clemson team and more points. 
What a night. We said, Do you have any goals? Todd? He said, Nah. He had been quoted by some people to say, yeah, It'd be nice to get 2,000 yards. And he sort of squelched that since. And we asked him that yesterday in our meeting. And he was like California cool laid back, even though he's from North Carolina. He said, Nah, just want to win. Want to win and like to play in every game. Yeah. You know, that was the that other was the thing other he thing. said. You know, he missed three last year. Marshall missed eight. And, uh, and now they've got the two freshmen to take a little pressure off the off the running load as well. Now they take Michelle out and they put Chubb in. And the fans are reacting to that because they saw what Chubb did the last time he touched it. When he ripped down the sideline, broke a couple tackles and scored. <laughs> Low center of gravity runs with great leverage. And if the Clemson defense isn't ready to play on this down, he's going to run it right into the end zone. Third down at seven. They give it to him. He broke one tackle. He broke another. And he's got a first down, I think. 228 pounds and on a 5'10 frame. And as Todd said, that is hard to tackle, especially when you're tired. <laughs> he came up just a little bit short. Down under a minute and a half now. Great start for Georgia. They'll have a week off before they play South Carolina in a battle in the SEC East that who knows might determine who wins that side of the Southeastern Conference. Nick Chubb counter. First and goal. And we take a look at our good hands play brought to you by Allstate tonight. I don't know. One of the great catches probably of the night came from the Georgia defense on that late throw by Stout. Davis went up and snared it. The freshman redshirt freshman walk on with a big defensive play tonight. Our good hands play for Aaron Davis. And I like what Mark Rick's going to do here too. He's going to take a knee. Yeah. I well, thought maybe they not. Might. <laughs> they better cover that wide out. Yeah, they're going to give it to Chubb again. And this time he's in. Flag oh, down. Yeah. Might take away his second touchdown. Illegal shift. Offense. Two players moving without getting reset. Five yard penalty. Remains first down. Todd, you know, it's uh, depending on what else happens through the college football weekend, but rank number 12 for Georgia, and they're not going to hurt that ranking no. at all. Not at all. You know, we, we expected them to, even though they had a new quarterback replacing a four year starter, we expected their offense to have some ability with the, the running backs they had. The big question was their defense. And it was questionable in the first half. Gave up 254 yards, but the second half, they have been dominant here at home. Now the knee will go down for Hudson Mason. He said he was always dreaming about going across the bridge, looking into Sanford Stadium and waiting for his name to be called as a starting quarterback on his home field. He's made it a successful one tonight, thanks to Todd Gurley and the Georgia defense in the second half. Mark Rick goes to three and one against Clemson in his coaching career. And in his 14th season gets off to a good start tonight. 45 to 21. Great start for Georgia. Clemson will have to go back to the drawing board a little bit. Don't forget Wisconsin and LSU is coming up next.